Hi, welcome back. If you've been following the series, you'll know that we've uh, we've completed most of it, and the last task is the FM alignment. The first stage of that is obviously the IF alignment for the FM. And before doing that, I'll just go through the schematic and give you a basic outline of what it is we're trying to achieve. So if we look at this section here, as far as tuning for the IF is concerned, it starts inside that metal can of the FM. Now that metal can is the part that I try to avoid opening up. And in this case, I thought I'd have to actually have to go in there because I had absolutely no FM. But anyway, the first tuning that happens in here, and I'm not talking about the RF tuning. In other words, I'm not talking about aligning the station to the dial. I'm just talking about the tuning for the uh, IF frequency. That happens over here. That is the first, effectively the first IF transformer. And that actually occurs inside the can. Now what you need to do is adjust those two uh, cores to get the best response on the IF frequency, which is in this case 10.7 megahertz. We've got the ECC85 tube up here. The IF transformer, or the two coils that align the IF, one of them is this one here, and that one is coil 111 on the schematic, and coil 112 which is the corresponding core for the transformer effect, is directly below this, which you reach at from the underside of the, um, of the can, of the radio. So once you've tuned that transformer there, the signal actually comes out of that metal can, and it's switched in to the uh, grid of the mixer tube, the ECH81 tube, okay? So, um, what we're doing here, the, the AM signal comes down here, from here to that switch over there. So the grid receives either the FM signal or the AM signal. Now, once it goes through the uh, mixer tube, and uh, it's also got a amplification section here, this signal goes into that other can, which is the other IF transformer. And this transformer, as mentioned before, has two sections. The uh, one part is the AM, the lower part is the AM, which we've adjusted to do the AM alignment. The top part, that is core, what is it, 17? You can see 17 over here, I think this is 18, yeah, 17 and 18. Those are the two that you have to adjust to, um, to align for the IF at 10.7 uh, megahertz, which then goes into the EF89 tube, which is an IF uh, amplifier. So that is the second stage of tuning. Now that transformer, let me show you on the radio. Here it is here. You have two cores on the top and underneath uh, you have two more cores. And by looking at the schematic and checking the uh, connections, I've determined that this one here is the AM and this bottom one here is the FM one. Once you get out of the EF89, we come to this section here where you have this um, ratio capacitor. So that over there is part of the FM circuit. And the other part of the FM circuit is this section here with this transformer winding over here, this core over here. So as you can see, there's a dotted line around all these components. And that just tells us that all this including the EF, EABC80, is actually inside the second or the biggest metal can that we have over there. And that was a problem because there are certain components in here that I needed to check, namely the two microfarad capacitor. That was replaced. The resistors were all fine. Um, the AM section of that I, hadn't, uh, I didn't need to touch at all, and I'd already aligned for it. And then over here, this had to be adjusted. This core over here... 201 and 203 that is uh, and that one over there has to be adjusted one to give you the peak amplitude at the uh, at the IF frequency of 10.7 and the other one to give you the best uh, ratio of the detection ratio so these two are also adjusted to give you the uh, the IF performance now this one here 
is one where we take the audio from and that one is adjusted last and this is the one where you have to play around with um, with uh, a, milia, a micro amp ammeter and measure for zero current at the perfect uh, at the spot where you want it to be but the first thing you need to do is loosen this coil this core and adjust the other the three the other the previous ones that I've mentioned to get the best response at the higher frequency so what we are trying to do is if we draw the frequency line here um, and we've got our 10.7 over here we are trying to create basically this we are trying to tune those filters so that you peak it at 10.7 now there's a slight problem here and that is that if you peak it too much if you did this if that bandwidth there that thing there was too narrow it means you would get a very good set of sensitivity at the, at the at the actual frequency you're tuning to but anything immediately beyond or before that frequency would be dramatically um, attenuated now that's a problem because your your uh, your modulated signal, your frequency modulated signal, is superimposed on 10.7. Now, if you want all the information of your signal to be heard, in other words, if you want your full audio spectrum to be heard, you want this to be fairly wide. You want this section here to be, now they say it should be about uh, 75 kilohertz each way. So you do want that to be about 150 kilohertz. Now that's a problem because if you tune it too sharp, you don't get what you want. And the uh, the way to tune it is to actually put a voltmeter across that uh, the ratio the the uh, capacitor that electrolytic I mentioned, and measure the voltage the negative voltage, and get it to peak at uh, the 10.7 megahertz. Now, again, this is why they always say it's better to do the FM alignment visually with a sweep generator so you can see what shape you're actually aligning to. And what we really want is something like this. You really want sharp decline. Try a different color. You want a sharp decline, a flat top, and another sharp decline. So you really want a flat topped response over here, or as flat as possible, for a certain extent, as much as you want the, uh, the hi-fi effect to come through. And this isn't that easy to do when you're uh, aligning for a maximum peak. Now with a visual alignment, you can get that a hell of a lot better. And what generally happens, this is utopia, that you would be able to peak this flat top as high as the sharp peak that you can get okay what generally happens is you get something more like this so you're, you're dropping your gain you're dropping your sensitivity okay in exchange for bandwidth which is the quality of the signal you want this to be wider but you can't have both you can't have this as wide as you want and as high as you could get if you peaked it so it really is a bit of a trade-off now, with the quality of the transmissions of FM signals that we get nowadays, generally most uh, town, cities, locations have quite a few FM stations. The uh, quality of the transmission is very good. So the strength of the signal is very good. So you can get away with losing this much gain in exchange for getting that much bandwidth. And that's exactly what we'll see here. What we try to do, there are various ways of doing this. If you wanted to do it, um, uh, one of the ways of doing it without doing it visually is to actually adjust, set the signal generator 10 point, say it's 10.75 or 10.77 um, and adjust the top, uh, the, the, the top uh, core for, one, for that frequency, move it down to 10.7 minus uh, 75 kilohertz and adjust the bottom core for a peak of that and it tends to even out. So you're basically doing what they call um, scatter tuning.
That's the first way that I tried it. And I tried a lot of things on this um, because I had no FM. Fortunately, it was only uh, tuning the, the, uh, the IF transformers and changing that uh, electrolytic capacitor. So what I'm going to show you here, having done it already because I needed to get the FM back, so this is sort of cheating, but what I'm going to show you here is I'm going to set a sweep generator up. The center frequency will be 10.7. I'm going to start it at about, um, let's say, 10.5. And I'm going to end it at about, uh, sorry, not 10.5. Let's call this uh, 9.7. And I'm going to end it at 11.7 megahertz. So we've got 1 megahertz either way um, with the 10.7 slap bang in the middle. And the way I'm going to do that is, again, I'll show you with the uh, signal generator and scope. And we'll see what happens here. I'll show you what I've got, and I'll show you the effect of changing any of those cores, uh, what sort of effect they will have on the shape and on the gain, okay? Now, one thing to bear in mind is I am not certain how responsive um, the whole thing is because, after all, you're measuring a voltage across an electrolytic capacitor. Now, you've got a capacitor sitting over there. You're measuring across there, really. So that's your, your scope. So you're measuring across an electrolytic capacitor. It's two microfarads in this case. So I would imagine that the faster you make the sweep, the slower the response will be, so the more distorted it'll be. So in effect, if you make this very, very fast and you get a perfect uh, um, slope like that, my guess is if you measure it at different frequencies later on, you'll find that it's not as straight as you might think. So you have to reach a happy medium as to where you compromise um, response, reactiveness, because the faster the sweep is, the minute you twiddle something, you'll see the effect straight away. But you have to, you have to basically get a compromise between that speed and the, uh, the um, correctness of that slope. So what I do is I set it for about 120 milliseconds. So this sweep goes from here to there uh, in 120 milliseconds. Now this allows me to set the scope for 10 milliseconds per division and know exactly where it is uh, frequency-wise. I know that the left end of the scope is 9.7. I know the right end of the scope is 11.7. And I know that the center is 10.7 megahertz. I get the whole sweep in one screen of the scope. Okay. I'll also know that this is six divisions on the scope. I have one megahertz. So that's one megahertz divided by six. That's like 16 megahertz per division. And the same with the left hand side. So if this is not straight, I know exactly where it's speaking. Okay. So let me set that up and show you. And I'll show you the effect of the different tweakings that one can do and what effect that will have on the slope and the shape of this, uh, of this curve, okay? So let's start with the signal generator. I'll set it to sweep. I'm going to start. The start frequency is at 9.7 megahertz. The stop frequency at 11.7 megahertz. The sweep time, I'll make that 120 milliseconds. Um, and I'll make sure that it's linear. Okay. Now, the actual level, the amplitude of the signal, I've set it to the minimum, so 1.4 millivolts RMS. And that's coming out of this channel here, so when I activate this channel, the sweeping will start. I'm also taking the signal from the back of the signal generator. So, when it comes to the sweep, there's a trigger. And the trigger out, I'm making a trigger on the upward pulse because I'm getting a, um, a square wave that reflects the start, the middle, and the end of the, uh, of the sweep. That's coming out of the back of the signal generator. That signal is going into my channel 2 of the scope. And the reason it's not going into the external trigger is simply because I want to see it and be able to ascertain and, and determine exactly that it is triggering at the right spot okay so I'm going in as channel 2 is the external trigger of this thing and I am triggering the scope on channel 2 as well so let me show you how I've connected this uh, this signal to the radio what you're supposed to do here is you're supposed to lightly couple the signal 
to the tube, the uh, ECC85. Now, one way of doing it is to wrap some wire around it. Another way of doing it is I use this tube shield, put it over the tube, I make sure that it doesn't touch the outside so it doesn't short to ground, and then I take my signal, I ground the signal generator on the ground itself, and I put my signal just to the shield, making sure that it's not touching. So that's lightly coupled, that should work perfectly fine. Now I'm going to connect my scope across that capacitor over there. And I'm going to measure a negative voltage proportional to the strength of the incoming signal. That's what we're going to use as our reference for the response uh, of, the, uh, of the filters that we've aligned, that we're going to align back here. Okay. Now that position on the on the actual radio, I've determined it's inside this metal can, and I can check that it is pin three over there. So I'm going to connect the scope to to the third pin of that metal can that's coming out of the bottom of the radio. And here it is. That there is pin one, two, three, and it joins that resistor over there. So I've connected the scope just to the the side of that resistor. We've got the trigger coming in at channel 2. I've got the trigger set to channel 2. And we can see what channel 2 is giving us there. Obviously I've got this on a very faster, much faster time base. But we can see the uh, trigger signal coming out from the signal generator. Showing us the start of the pulse, the middle of the pulse, the end of the pulse and then start again obviously. Okay. So what I'm going to show you now is let's see what we get on channel 2 or channel 1 rather. Now channel 1 I've set to invert so that I get a positive result as opposed to a negative voltage. Okay. What we're getting here is rather weird because we can't really determine much from that yellow trace over there. So we need to increase this. And what we can see right away, if we put this all on one screen, what we can see right away is that we've got this thing going too fast. This is a crazy time scale. Let me put it 1.2 seconds. Now at 1.2 seconds, I've got to change this time base. I've got it at 100 milliseconds per division. Times 12 gives us 1.2 seconds. And now if I play with the position of this response, there we have it. And what we're getting here is a peak pretty close to the 10.7 megahertz, which is at the middle there. I know this is uh, 9.7 megahertz over here. This is 11.7 megahertz. So the middle, because I've set it as a linear sweep, the middle is 10.7. As you can see, it is slightly off. And I'll explain that in the middle in a minute. You can see the trigger pulse goes up there, along here, down in the middle, and back down there. So it's showing us a whole uh, sweep sequence on the, on, the, on the screen. Now, if I want to see this a little bit better, I'm going to make the start and the end of the sweep closer to each other. So I'm going to, instead of 9.7, I'm going to make this about 10. Actually, let's make it 100 uh, kilohertz per division. So I'm going to make this uh, 10.1 start at 10.1 megahertz and end at, uh, what did I say, 0. 0.6. So 10.7 plus 0. 0.6, 11.3. So we're starting to see that we, we've got a little bit of a flat top over there. That's more like what we're looking for. It's still too far apart. So I'm going to change the sweep again. So I'm going to start it at 10.4. Uh, 10.4 10 megahertz, which is 300 kilohertz below. And I'm going to stop at 11 megahertz, which is 300 kilohertz above. And there we have it. So we can see we're getting a more or less flattened top over there and because we know that this here this is uh, 
11 megahertz at the top, 10.7 in the middle, and 10.4 at the bottom, I believe, yes, we know that this is 600 kilohertz. Sorry, 300 kilohertz. 300 kilohertz, that means it's 50 kilohertz per division, okay? 50 kilohertz per division. So I'm going to, I can, I can tell that over here, say there, I've got 50 kilohertz, there I've got 100 kilohertz. So between there and there, I've got 150 kilohertz, although it is not centered at 10.7. Now, I'm going to play with the, with the um, controls. I'm actually going to make this a little bit faster. I'm going to make it 600 milliseconds as opposed to, um, to 1.2 seconds. 600 milliseconds so I've got to change the time base instead of 100 milliseconds per division I'm going to change it to 50 whoops wrong one 50 milliseconds per division and I've got basically the same thing there what I'm going to show you now is what happens when I tweak those uh, cores okay here's the response that I have here um, that I've got through the radio I'm starting the sweep at 10.4. I'm ending the sweep at 11. So that's 300 kilohertz either side of 10.7. And I see there's a slight dip just at 10.7. A little peak below and a little peak above. Now I'm going to start with the core on the underside of the IF can. See what we get from that. Now it's shifting too far to the right, so let me go back a little bit. See what happens when I do the top one. I'm dropping the gain overall too much. So let me go the other way. That seems to be a peak over there. I'll try the second IF. That's peaking, but it's uh, reducing my bandwidth too much. So let me go back a bit. Remember, this is a compromise between amplitude and actual uh, bandwidth. That's more like it. Let's go to the top one. This one's really sensitive. It's about as good as that's going to get. Now let me try the other one. It's the second IF can. That seems pretty symmetrical. Yeah. That's pretty symmetrical. Let me go back to the first one, see if it makes any difference. There we go. That's pretty nicely peaked. It might actually be too far peaked. That's 50 kilohertz down. That's not too bad. Okay. The top of the can. So what do we got here? Let's have a look at this on a different scale. I'm going to reduce the width of the um, of the sweep even further. At the moment, I've got 300 kilohertz here. I'm going to make this 20 kilohertz per division. So. Uh, 120 that way will be 10.7, 10.6, 10.58. So I'm going to start at 10.58 megahertz, and I'm going to stop at I want 120, so 10.820 megahertz. So I have that's a little bit too sharp. Uh, let me make it 30 per division. So I want 180 kilohertz that way and 180 kilohertz that way. So that will be 10.880 at the top. 
and at the bottom it's uh, 10.52 megahertz there we go okay so what I'm seeing here is that the, the, the center is not exactly on 10.7 it's slightly off I think that's as good as it's going to get so let's have a look and see what we've got here about there so what I'm looking at is between that point and that point is my 3 dB point and I have um, 30 what is it 30 kilohertz per division so I've got one two three that's about 80 something kilohertz and that's about 80 something kilohertz so I've got about 160 kilohertz bandwidth over there uh, that's the minus 3 dB points and that is probably as good as it's going to get there's a slight hump on the left hand side but that's not a problem that's very low relative to the the, the base um, I could try and just oh. You've got to be careful this is very very sensitive anything you do changes it let me just try and drop that hump a little bit Well, that's it. So here we have it. There's our curve. And if I make the time 1.2 seconds and change the time base, that is actually more accurate. And I can go slower and slower and slower just to show you the result. But I'm quite happy with that result. And that means that, so I've sacrificed a little bit of the sensitivity and selectivity, okay, uh, for a better bandwidth where I can get better quality audio coming out of my signal. Generally FM will be a better quality audio and that means you're looking for this bandwidth to get your hi-fi sound I suppose you'd call it and uh, that's what we're doing here. We're flattening the top, making it less sensitive, less selective but making it more quality. Okay. Now the final adjustment is that last part of the second IF transformer. So it's that thing there, it's got a center tap and what we need to do is to adjust that till we get a particular condition which is set up as follows. You take two resistors 100k, 100k, tap the 100k into there which is ground, the other 100k into there which is the top of that capacitor, join the two together and you measure from the joint of those two resistors you put your microammeter on the positive of the microammeter on there and the other connection the negative of the microammeter you connect to where the signal comes out of the center tap through that 100k resistor and so you have access to it at 0 0.6 over there and that's what we're going to do I'll show you so here we have it as we as I mentioned you take the one resistor here connect that to ground that's connected to ground over there. That comes to the center point, which then receives the other resistor connected to that point three, which is the top of the that capacitor, that electrolytic capacitor. That's where we've been measuring the response to now. And we've connected the microammeter to that point there. And the other side of the macroammeter, this black point here, is connected to point six on that uh, IF cam which is effectively the closest route to the center tap of that coil that we're going to adjust. And that coil is this one over here. Now I'm going to set this up so you can see me adjusting the coil and so you can see the result on the meter. This is the meter. It's set in microamps. This one has a 10 microamp range and that's what I'm going to use. Now what I want to do is at the moment we're reading um, what is it 1.1 microamps okay I have a negative DC button on this meter now the reason for that is I should have a meter with the zero at the center but I don't this would allow me to measure negative current and positive current okay now because I don't have a, a meter with that zero at the center I can adjust the negative DC switch here and it'll read in reverse so what I'm going to do is adjust that now what I, what I should see is a peak and then a very sharp decline and measuring a peak on the other side so it sort of goes positive down through zero negative two peaks okay 
and that's what I'm trying to see on here and I'll show you so I'm going to start fiddling this one this coil if you recall I took it almost completely out because that's what you're supposed to do when you do the uh, IF alignments so I'm going to start twisting this in and I should see it peak it could well peak the other way but I don't think so it's starting to go up um, I keep turning and it's measuring a higher current and it's peaking and then it's coming down and then very quickly comes down and if I keep turning but I'm going to make this negative DC remember you're measuring the reverse now you get a peak on the other side so what I need to do is go back and measure now you see it peaks the other way so I'm going to measure I'm going to set it to zero and it's again very fiddly but not that difficult that is near as damn it oh spoke too soon there we go it's at zero so we have the IF aligned properly and we also have that uh, the uh, final coil with a center tap perfectly aligned for FM and this should give us a fairly good result if not in fact it should give us an excellent result let's check for it okay here we go let's see if we've uh, done a good job of the FM alignment remember this radio had practically nothing when I first got it and um, let's see I've got an antenna at the back so uh, we should get something Yep. Uh, it's pretty sensitive. Whoa, it's very sensitive. Até domingo, o Bolrei com sabor frutos silvestres a 8,99 euros o quilo. Alright, good. We've got FM back and it's uh, pumping out a pretty good quality sound. So it looks like that job is done. Now, just to recap, um, cleaning comes next and the cabinet. Now, you might have noticed that uh, a lot of the stuff on the front has been cleaned up. Basically, I cleaned up this whole front uh, of the radio. The knobs were completely black in there, so a Dremel and a uh, scrubbing tool had to be used on there. That's come out shiny now. Um, the knobs are all in good shape again. The glass has been cleaned. All the knobs were cleaned individually. Bit of a job getting the grit and grime out from between them, but uh, that was done. So basically this uh, set as it is here is cleaned up. And the next stage is the cabinet, which is a pain in the butt. I'm going to do a bit of uh, videoing on it uh, because somebody's asked me how to, to show them how I go about it. It's not the how-to, it's the how-I. Uh, everybody will have their own way. Uh, one thing I found out early on is um, the way to find out how to restore a cabinet is to do it wrong many, 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 many times and uh, you finally get it right because you're working with uh, sanding down, you're working with... Uh, the, the, the color tone that you put on there, you're working with acrylic, you're working with um, um, the varnish, lacquer, lots of layers of lacquer, very fine sandpaper and uh, wet sanding between layers. But anyway, I'll go through that um, not very exhaustively, but I will go through that so that you can get an idea of how I do it and we'll see what the result is. All right, thanks for watching. See you soon.